Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, I had a great weekend. Um, what did you do on the weekend? A little sunburn, but <laughs> covered up with makeup, we'll be fine. It was a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Oh, yeah, the Mexica New Year. We celebrated the Mexica Indigenous New Year this weekend. Had a great time. It was a two-day event. You heard about it earlier before in other previous shows. Uh, the first one was at Gardner Community Center, and then the second one was at? CET. CET. Yeah, yeah. So it was a nice two-day event. We met a lot of beautiful, beautiful people. Oh, yeah. Um, Dr. Daryl Bay Wilson came all the way from Carson City, Nevada again, so it was nice to see him oh, yeah. and his He's, son. His yeah. sons are fun, man. Crazy guys. <laughs> So it was nice to see them. We met some new people. We met a lot of Actually, a we lot met of some viewers. fans. We met some fans <laughs> well, out there. Well, they weren't fans. They were viewers. They were fans. <laughs> well, they were viewers. And um, uh, we really thank you for watching the show. A lot of uh, people came up and said that they watched the show. The Zuni father? We met um, Robert Valenzuela. Robert he just Valenzuela, moved here yeah. from, to San Jose from New Mexico. Yeah. And um, his son? he's a silversmith. Yeah. And his son's going to school here. But... Uh, he said, he goes, we felt so good when we saw there was a native show on TV. <laughs> <laughs> he says he felt at home, so he was real happy, and he came yeah. over and spent a couple of days with us there at the festival. Oh, so yeah. that was really nice. And um, Garvard Goodplume was here from South Dakota. Yeah. And just a lot of, a lot of great people. We met a lot of new people, too. Yeah. And so that was a lot of fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what we had the pleasure of meeting and uh, bringing on the show is Skyler Wolf. And welcome, Skyler. How are you all doing? Pleasure. Welcome. So you are Navajo from New Mexico. Yes, I am. I'm, well, I'm glad everyone's coming from New Mexico because it leaves room for me to move there. <laughs> actually, 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 you know, well, I was talking to someone about that earlier about uh, the heat. You know, I think it's a lot cooler up here. Is and it? I get a lot of, I run into a lot of folks so far that were telling me that, oh, it's kind of hot out there. It's hot out there. I'm like. It's not hot, it's actually cooler. It's cooler. And when I, we talked about the digits a little bit, I'm like, okay, then maybe it is kind of hot out where <laughs> I come from than it is compared to and here. And you are from? I'm from the Four Corners area of um, New Mexico, uh, the, the Navajo Reservation there. I um, was raised on that reservation and had continued through boarding school, mm -hmm. you know. My, but that's where I got my education from. You went to boarding school? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I was um, the Fort Wingate boarding school near Gallup. It's about like s about 13 miles from Gallup, and it's a, uh, I guess it was an old fort. I believe the fort is still, you know, occupied by soldiers that, that you know, are in and out of there. Wow. Yeah, I you find that day? interesting, yeah, That's because right. most of the guests we've had on the show, uh, it's the elders who've gone through the boarding schools or our guests parents who have gone through boarding, boarding school. So I'm surprised that someone as young as you, you know, what was that experience like? Well, it was easier because everybody's native. As a matter of fact, when I was growing up, we had, we actually had uh, some of the natives from Oakland, California. Hmm. And we had them like from Wisconsin. They would come up and, you know, and a lot of them spent their four years there. Are they native run? They were they were native. They were native oh, well, Americans. Maybe that's so it's a little yeah. bit different now because back in the day when, when our, our our parents and our grandparents were going through these boarding schools, they're a little bit more abrasive and more abusive back then and they they wanted to they were white run. Yeah, they're white run, they want to take our culture away, you know. But now a lot of the boarding schools now are a little bit different, right? Somewhat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess uh, in a way it would be because like the, the teachers that are there that teach within the you know uh -huh. vicinity of it they actually have their children going to school there so oh. you get like a couple of um non-natives running around there and you're like you know who tribe you from <laughs> <laughs> you know and i was like he's a little lighter on the ears uh, what's going on you know? but um from what i understand you know is that a lot of the a lot of the people um they they have um when when they when they when they left, a lot of them still talk about the old boarding schools like they were like they you know they they don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But actually, they still do. And even nowadays, you get a lot of the you know the the, the parents where I come from wanting to send their children there just to get a feel and to rub elbows with a lot of the other 
natives out there. Yeah. So they can, you know, because they're getting to the point where it's it's not expanding enough, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not they're reaching out there, but as far as you know, culture to culture to get an understanding to meet friends from you know another so culture. It's, it's not like a forcible thing like it was before, right? No, before yeah. it was you know I think yeah. the parents want to get rid of their children, you know, <laughs> oh, send them boarding school, well, they took you know, the kids too, and they not, I you know, and and if, I mean if I was a parent back then, I'd probably you know, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, I we need you know. Um, <laughs> Um, alone time and we got work we can't cook for them every morning you know and wait for them and so we have to send them off you know well we're surrounded by guitars or you're surrounded by guitars now you're a musician tell us about your background as a musician well <clears throat> a lot of my music comes from life experiences mm -hmm. and um, I was when, when I left uh, the boarding school. I didn't want to go home because we would end up. Our 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 culture is um, known for um, sheep herding, a, mm -hmm. a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to herd sheep, so I ended up living for Niagara Falls, New York. You know, right after oh. high school. Wow. I was going to college up there for a little bit, and uh, my college education kind of like uh, dissipated. I guess I kind of rerouted my my way of um, my course of life. So what ended up happening was, you know, I ended up on Skid Row and um, I pretty much had to tough it out like everybody else. I learned, you know, not quite an easy life in Niagara Falls. Struggles, you know, ups and downs. Now, what type, what style of music do you play and how did you come upon this style for yourself? I get that question a lot, actually. Um, a lot of people tell me that I have my own style. Mm -hmm. which is a good thing because you don't want to sound like everybody else yeah you have a very unique sound but when it comes to um uh if you were to compare or if i was to have like you know role models i grew up listening to like uh artists like neil young and johnny cash and you know ray charles or um you know roy orbison yeah. you know and, you know, back then, you know, we had one radio, and I remember growing up, and the song we would hear would be like, you know, Rock and Robin, and that song is going <laughs> on. And uh, to this day, I don't even think I really know who actually sings that song, but I grew up with that type of uh -huh. music. But just listening-wise, a, a lot of things I did when I was a kid was basically work. So I had chores to do every day. Mm -hmm. So the music must have been within those grounds, you know, as far as, you know, a style, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, as soon as my trial and errors had, you know, I had, I had, you know, pulled myself out of that and, you know, had left Niagara Falls, New York. Now, we're talking like a good 12 years. I've been up there for like 12 years. So oh. 12 years of just disappearing, you know, and coming back within, you know, the reservation, the, mm -hmm. res the reservation area where I grew mm -hmm. up at, and in the city, and I, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't stop there. You know, I mean, I tell a lot. I, I like to teach a lot of children, and I talk to them a lot, and I always tell them, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that I was, you know, not only on Skid Row when I did come back home, but I was also um, dealing with substance abuse. You know, uh, you know, alcohol was one of the main mm -hmm. things. You know, and I always tell them, you know, there's. Well, I had found a way out of it. I believe it's a blessing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I always tell, you know, a lot of the kids, you know, I sacrificed a lot, education and whatnot, to mm -hmm. do, you know, mm -hmm. to, 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 to pull and uh, share my experiences with what is, with what other people have already, have also gone through. So I, I always, when they want to ask about my music, I always tell them, look, Y'all write my music for me. You write my music for me with my own experiences. So I can sing you a song and we'll be able to draw in, you know, something out of it that you can compare your life to. Mm. And, it, and to me, that's like saying, look, you know, I've been through there. I've been there. So, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying. Mm. I'd love to hear a song, and we're surrounded by guitars, so you have your pick. 
Um, would you play us a song, please? Sure. I, I want to hear about your national award, too, but maybe after this song. Okay, this song here is a bluesy, a, a, more of a bluesy tune. And, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a newer song, and it's called Midnight Ride. Now, I've, I spent a lot of time, you know, uh, hanging out with bikers here. So, it refers to that and um, all those other lonely evenings <laughs> and all those runaway thoughts that you have. Just received an award, I understand, in uh, in Florida. Um, it was a national award. It, it was, was a um, Singer Songwriters of America award in Florida. It was a. Um, I guess they had. I, I did. I had no idea that I was a nominated. And apparently, someone had nominated me from um, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it was uh, like the East Coast. A lot of artists is from there. Cool. You know, I saw your website, and it looked like you were nominated for quite a few categories, and I thought, wow. I think it was 14 <laughs> was categories Yeah, that's what I read. Or something. And 14 categories. I was, it, 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 it caught me by surprise because a lot of uh, the folk there, they um, end up, um, you know, a lot of them do, like, um, they uh, rockabilly country and, 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 and folk rock and, and from rock to blues. And it was an experience for me. And what was really, I don't know if y'all seen that movie called The Distinguished Gentleman. I mean, it, 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 I, I felt like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I walked into this place and there was like tons of people there. And, and I was the only native there. <laughs> I was like, well, this is cool. Well, I'm sure there were, you know, there were, you know, like a lot of um, Cherokees, you know, but yeah. distinguished enough to know. <laughs> and and one, 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 one couple had walked up to me and said that, you know, we've seen you 
until you got up on stage, we didn't know what to expect until you started singing. Mm-hmm. And when you started singing, they said it was like, okay, we're all gonna sit here and, and listen a little bit longer. And I had the crowd going there. It was, it, was, it was a really pleasant experience because what I really try to do is I try to get natives and non-natives and I try to bring them together to, to, to show that we can do music just like anybody else out there. Mm-hmm. Now, being native, I know since the, we're always giving back to our community, what type of things are you doing to give back to your community? Dreams and goals. Dreams. I had a question on that my, for myself last uh-huh. night, again, as usual, the crossroads of life. I personally would just, I, would, I like to raise funds and, and, and t- toys for children, mm-hmm. for children's hospitals, or hospitals that, that need, you know, that, have, that need these needs. You know? mm-hmm. I mean, we have kids every day that are in the hospital, even for a short time. You know, it could be, you know, a little sprained ankle or something, you know. And I don't think a lot of these kids like to go there. When you say doctor, when you say shot, they get all scared. So. <laughs> and with the war going on, with, with, with all this, you know, commotion, you know, I mean, it's a lot to deal with, you know. We forget about our own children. Yeah. We can't teach our children to give, you know, and, you know, to receive, you know, if the, it, the proper way. That, that things should be received to them, you know, where, where it's not shown as or taken advantage. Mm-hmm. And the reason why, you know, is because of with, with what's going on. So we tend to forget about our own children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's my, my, my personal experiences and we know what I do. So I, I try very hard to get involved with a lot of the um, uh, um, children's hospitals. Mm-hmm. I figure from there, there's um all of our people you know mm-hmm. as far as you know white black red yellow i mean people always go by colors you know we could say you know the race itself you know? yeah the human race so i i try to help all of our children for mm-hmm. now they're all of our children the decisions that they make later on in life will depend on the influences of that society uncovers as life goes on it continues in their life or it's up to our elders to, to try to teach that, their parents yeah. when they're on. It's important but for the be time being, those children are, are precious enough where you have to give them some kind of guidance. They're like an egg still. That's right. So that's important to me. If I can reach somebody, if I can reach someone's parent saying that, you know, that we have given them, we, you know, because of their needs, you know, mm-hmm. that will shine a little light. And their brother or their sister, you know, they see that the child was given something or the help was obtained through monies that were that were donated, you know, mm-hmm. and they could, you know, I was uh, in LA looking around at a few things, and um, I had mentioned this to someone I was talking to, and he, as a matter of fact, he was a a, a, a bus driver, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, I had kind of mentioned what I was doing because he was interested, and he said, yeah, the Children's Hospital, oh, they helped, they helped my child, they paid for everything wow. for her surgery, yeah. and. And it and it and we don't give enough credit to, you know, you know what what the children's hospitals do mm-hmm. because when it until it happens to the person's child or their niece, their nephew, their grandchild, you know, or their godchild, and then it's a concern, yeah, yeah. It's and then you wish to, you wish that I should have donated something or I should have done something, you know, I, you know when they asked you know for donations, yeah. you know, so. Wow, that's really noble what you're doing. It's really needed. Can I ask you to do another song for us? Sure. We'll do a... So you, you have so many different guitars. Do you pl- use different ones for different types of songs? Or? Yes. Uh, a lot of the recordings when I was... When, well, they're done. And a lot, they're, the, a lot of the guitars, except for two of them, have different tunings. Mm-hmm. Ah. So when I record a song in that certain tuning, it, it has to be in that tuning. Oh. So, oh, okay. and people will recognize the guitar. If I change the song, if I do the same song in a different guitar, they're like, that sounds a little bit different. Uh, it's yeah. only because the guitar <laughs> has its own sound. So yeah. they're like my purse, they're like my family now. I travel around <laughs> with, so you So each know. one has, has a group of uh, yeah. songs that is yeah. specific yeah. for it. And, I, and they will probably be with me and, you know, I try not to pick up any other guitars. I mean, 
this was the latest one that I picked up, and it's got his own songs, and I'm thinking, no more guitars. <laughs> because I already have no room for myself on the stage. <laughs> so they can order your CD. And I think we're going to go quickly to announcements. Yeah. And so Sundas, you're going to give us those announcements? Yeah. IHC Native Youth Program presents Ghost Rider Screening. This is on March 22nd, uh, 2007, camera 12, 7 to 8, uh, 9 p.m. 14th Annual Cesar Chavez March and Festival, March 31st. That's at uh, Mexican Heritage Plaza, 10 a.m., 1700 Elm Rock. A Heart Now Powwow honoring Indigenous intertribal people. That's April 21st, 
2007, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's at 156 Homestead. And one of our sponsors, Native TANF program, 490 North 1st Street, San Jose, California. Woman Empowered to Move Ahead, a network, a CTC network. And another one of our things is Work to, to Future. This is for Center and Training and Careers. This is 1600 Las Plumas. And also tune in to Indian Time Radio, KKUP 91.5, every Tuesday, 8 to 10 p.m. Boy, that was fast. Art Beat <laughs> this is another one of our, our sponsors for all your framing needs, 1600 Las Plumas Avenue, San Jose. Mark and Diane Jimenez. And Alan Zerber, thank you. <laughs> another one of our sponsors. And remember Leonard Peltier, 30 years of false imprisonment. Have you thought about Leonard today? Wow. Become a sponsor of Native Voice TV. Oh, yeah. And Scott, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I love your music. It's beautiful. And your name, the name of your CD real quick before we... Uh, the name of the CD right now is uh, Conviction. Conviction. Yeah. Can we get uh, Skylar's information up on the screen? Yeah, there we go. And they can go to your website. The website's beautiful, too. I, I went to it yeah. today, and it gives a lot of good information, shows a lot of your awards, and places you've performed. Well, thank you. I will have a, um, I will have a, the second release. So, uh, Stay actually, tuned. <laughs> uh, there will be a 2008 will be the next release. Actually, the surprise is there will be two albums out. Wow, we're looking so forward to it. So so you thank got, you for being here. Whenever you're back in San Jose, so contact us. Thanks for being here. We'll see yeah. you next week, 6 o'clock. Good night. Native Voice TV. Good night.